Okay, um, we're going to look at tagging of rooms to start with. Um, rooms are in themselves, you can see um, there's a section on the architecture tab. The best way to understand how this works is you could tag, you could put a tag into a room and just, or put a piece of text into a room and give it a name such as office. But by making a room um, object, and you'll see it is an object you define much more about that space than just a name you give it a size, you give it a square meterage or a cubic meterage um, and you can assign properties to that space such as wall finishes um, floor finishes, ceiling finishes etc and so it's a it's essentially an object called a room and you'll see what I mean if we click on the room button wherever this finds solid walls that are defined defined as room bounding objects um, you get a preview of what that room is going to be and if I press click uh, if I click now that's now naturally called room 1 it's giving me a square meterage and notice you can be quite neat it gives you a suggestion of how to line these things up room 2 the sequential in numbering room three, room four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so those are that's a very quick way. Now notice that you have two different things here. You've got the tag and you've got the room object. Now the room object is quite often hard to select. You have to hover the cursor somewhere around there and you will get that crossing point there and now you've selected the room object so you can see some of the properties associated with it such as the square meterage etc okay so we have a room object and we have a room tag so the tag at the moment is showing square meterage and square foot and a name and a number now that might not be what you want you might just want it as a name and number you can change this there are a few different types in here to choose from um, name and metric area name only so you can see but um, let's just leave it as that for now okay the naming of the rooms at the moment they're all called room um, let's go through and make some names quite a nice thing to do is do a slow left click I'll do that again on the tag on the name and call it let's make some offices Two. Let's um, maybe make kitchen. Oops. If you double click too fast on the um, on the tag, it goes into the edit family, which I just did there. So a slow double click. Um, let's make a bathroom. Another office. Let's make a um, store cupboard. Maybe a reception. Okay, so you can see um, it's a relatively easy thing to add and make changes to the names okay this space here is um, a good example and why we wanted to 
do I want why I wanted to leave this you might not necessarily have a room bounding object if you see I click on that wall and if I go down room bounding is ticked okay so naturally walls come in as room bounding objects um, if you want to turn off that as a room bounding object so it might be a low dividing wall within a larger space for instance um, or um, it could even be in the uh, the toilets and you could be uh, putting in cubicle walls so those wouldn't be room bounding objects okay but I want this area here to be a separate zone or space to this area here so using the room separator button I can literally just draw a line from there to there, hit escape. So I've now got an imaginary room boundary. So if I was to come in and add a room, notice I can now separate that and that. So I'm going to put two separators in here, one that crosses the corridor and one that crosses this space here. Let's put a tag in there, a tag in there, and a tag in there. So we've now got all of the rooms. I'm going to call this one Breakout, this one Corridor, and this one, oops, clicked on the wrong bit, zoom in a little bit lobby okay so we've got a uh, room layout okay let's um, put in some other tags while we're here as well so these are tags these are room tags um, you can change the numbering system if you want by simply going around and double clicking on the numbers um, Okay, if we go to the annotate tab now, tag by category or tag all. Um, tag all, if you've been quite accurate with your building, you can hit tag all and it will it will put a tag onto every object in your project. Uh, I find that's a bit um, overkill at first when you're first learning. So let's use tag by category. If leader is ticked, turn this off for now. We don't want to bother having leaders on this, and you'll see why. Because I want to tag these doors. So if I click on the door, it will place the number 3 for that one, because that was the third door I added. Um, in previous videos, I added, I added two doors, and then we did some changes. So you'll see that you can go along and click on the, the doors and it will remember the sequence that you put them in. If that's not the numbers you want again you can just change them if I select that now as number 3 I can see that the markup says number 3 there I could change that to number 1 in there and etc. I'm just going to undo that to keep it sequential. Okay, so that's door tagging. Now, um, what can we do with these? If we go to on the annotate tab, go to color fills. This is how to do a legend for this. Um, for these rooms um, and this is quite a nice way of diagrammatically explaining the layout of a building if you click on legend and then place it up here for now okay this pops up a color scheme has not been assigned to the view the legend will appear blank space type spaces 
So do we want to look at the spaces, the rooms or the HVAC zones? We haven't got any spaces or HVAC zones in for now. So we're going to look at the room and we'll look at it by room name. So you can choose what your legend is going to be. OK that. So you see very quickly the schedule has looked at all of the different definitions of the rooms and assigned a colour for those rooms if you want.